rock and roll world. I was in the 80s playing in bands and we warmed up for Aerosmith and Def Leppard and Iron Maiden and I had the long hair and it was amazing. But my, my brother got into drugs and he overdosed because face it, we're in a war, spiritual war. It's World War Three in other countries. But in America, I believe we are at war in spirit and it's coming physically this next year, sad to say. I want people to have skin in the game because if they don't, they won't use it. So if we apply the principles of God, because he is a God of wealth and prosperity, he doesn't want us poor and broke because then we can't change the world. So he wants us to have the wealth. He wants us to have the riches, but we have to be accountable with that or we can abuse situations and take advantage of people. So, Jeff, I'm sitting next to you on an airplane. How do you introduce yourself to people? Obviously, you've sold your roofing company. It seems like you lead with that, but also on your website, you're a blockchain expert. You lead with a, your religion, your Christian, your entrepreneur, a gotrepreneur. What do you want to be known for? How do you introduce yourself on the planes? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I do travel quite a bit, and I'm always looking and aware and I, I approach with love I, I approach with i want to connect I, I i see people as souls and at 60 years old i had a stroke 10 years ago so to me every breath matters and so to me life is a daily attribute that we get the uh <laughs> chance to live and so uh, i want to make the most of every day so i'm at the airport i'm in the stores i'm in line hey how are you doing today you know uh, hey, just wanted to see how you're doing. If I sense that they're feeling odd, I won't pr push in too hard. But on a plane, in a seat, and say, how, how's your day going? Where are you from? You know, strike up a conversation, kind of get the feeling of where they are mentally and spiritually. If they ask you, what do you do? What do you answer? What do I do? <laughs> well, I'm known as a Godpreneur. What is a Godpreneur? Well, what I do is I have entrepreneurial spirit and a heart, and I mix that with kingdom principles. Uh, and so what does that mean? Well, we know that if we seek righteousness first in the kingdom of God, all the other things are added to us. And I may not go into that as an initial response, but in the end, I'm Jeff Richfield. I have a family, beautiful wife, Jody, and you know, two lovely uh, boys and Jessica, my daughter, which you probably met Jessica, and she speaks at roof conferences. And yeah, I feel like I'm the most blessed man in the world. Uh, and, and the Lord's given me so many attributes to... Um, to help others and build his kingdom. So that's that's where it ends up, his kingdom first. And I believe this next year, we're going to see that manifest in a bigger way. Uh, finally, you said there that when you sit on the plane, you see people as a soul. Have you seen uh, the clip from the pastor, I think, Kaplan, uh, when he says that I'm not, he's not uh, flying commercial because he doesn't want to be in the tubes with demons. <laughs> that's, how, uh, that's why... He flies private jet. Have you seen that? I have not. Is that, is that Keith Copeland or is that Joel? Yes, Oster? yes, yes, yes. One of those. <laughs> okay. Do you I follow haven't... those guys? There are lists. My wife said to me the other day, she said, there's a list of the top four pastors and how they aren't really living as you would think they would as Christians and flying their jets. And my son said, Dad, is that really God's will that they have the best of the best? And I said, I believe God. We serve a God of prosperity. He doesn't want us poor. The monks who were poor got donated by rich people. So they couldn't survive without donations, which came from wealthy people. So I do believe that God is a God of prosperity. Even though it doesn't talk about God's going to give us a bunch of money in the Bible, it is the book of prosperity. All right. Well, I have it a little bit down the line, but we're already talking about it. Let's talk about it. So that, that's called uh, Gospel of Prosperity. And it, it receives a lot of criticism. Uh, who do you follow uh, as far as like, who is your spiritual mentors? Can you name a couple preachers, couple like, let's do this. Name couple mentors or uh, people you follow in both spiritual world and business world. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now at my age 60, it's changed. In the beginning, I would, would go with a mentor who was a spiritual um, father to me. Because I lost my father, uh, he got liver cancer uh, back in 96, passed away. So my father never really mm, spiritually guided me. And so I grew up sort of as a isolated um, son, 
um, seeking, seeking, seeking in the Catholic religion, which is great. I love the icons. I love the monasteries. I love the, the word, come back to the word. But I never had that in my life until I moved to Nashville. And um, I got a spiritual father named Oni Kirk. You won't know him, but he has nine, nine sons and daughters, uh, a big family. And he knew the word of God back and forth and forwards. And for that season of my life, when I was 40, it was really good to have that foundation. Um, now, he was very strict and religious, seemed like laws and going mm -hmm. back to what you have to do, what you have to do. And I believe you have to do things. But there's a sp certain religious spirit that comes on that. If you don't baptize in the name of Jesus, you're not really baptized. That was one of his thoughts. Well, I mean, really, <laughs> the Father, I baptize you in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is, is, uh, is the norm. But there was who do, follow, who, who do you follow now? Do you have a pastor now? So now, you know, I, I follow uh, pastors that you may still not have heard of. And I, the other day I watched Joel Osteen on Sunday morning and I thought he was very prophetically gifted. And I asked my wife, how does this guy have his his speech down such in a way that he's not taking notes and all that? He's got some good prophecies talking about the uh, blocks in our life. Use those as God's will and accept them and lay your sword down this year and not get uh, frustrated and, and, and bitter when things don't go your way, but get better by just taking that as God's will. Because all the apostles of the Bible faced frustrations, closed doors. Jonah got in a whale. Abraham had to almost kill his son. Uh, Joseph locked in a prison, right? Moses killed a man and in 40 years he's in the desert. And so in the Bible, we find that there is resistance on the, on the men of God and women of God. But at the end, they find their destiny and their legacy is fulfilled when God does a swirly whirly somehow and gets them there in the end. And so it's not about works. It's about being a son and knowing sonship. But yeah, I mean, prayers for prosperity are all in the Bible. And uh, we can go through some of those you know, words. And Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider. It talks about that in Genesis 22. And so people have a problem with prosperity, but uh, in Psalm 35 it says i am god's servant he takes pleasure in my prosperity so but people get it backwards and they think oh if i'm rich i won't be godly i won't be holy uh but get out of that kitchen because the lord cooks prosperity in his house and so that's do you do, do you agree that uh we do have false preachers false process a hundred percent Yes, and it does take money to build God's kingdom. Facilities need to be built, right? Structures. Now, some... how, how do how, how do you identify how how does someone know, you know, how to pick? Bible says that you know, test spirits, right? Like test preach. Like how do you like how do we know that Joel Osteen is not a false preacher and a real preacher? Good question. I said to my wife, I said, someday, I think in heaven, a lot of people will be disappointed that he made it there and he's in a good seat <laughs> because I think they can, oh, accuse people so easy. The church is so good about judging others and getting jealous because they don't have what other people have. And should he have a plane? There's a deliverance preacher here named Greg Locke in Nashville, and he has a tour bus. I took a picture, sent it to my son. He, hey, look at Greg, man. He's doing really good. He's going across the nation, delivering people. And he says, is that really God's will for his life to have a tour bus? I said, any way he can get there, whether it's a horse, a buggy or a plane, I think it's fine. As long as he's doing God's work and rightly dividing the scripture and doing it God's way. I'm not criticizing. I'm just asking a question. How, how do we navigate? You know, if we That's agree that there is a false preachers, what, yes. like, you know, how do we navigate through in that world? Yes, Mm -hmm. what, one of the things uh, I found, like I was watching your um, podcast with other people and people call you false uh, preacher yes. too uh, in, in the comments on one of your podcasts. I saw and that. One one thing that came up that you followed Mike Bickles. Do I say it right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mike Bickle in Kansas City House of Prayer. What yeah. an amazing teacher he is. And look what happened to him. How long? Just, just recently, December just recently. 23rd, three, four That's days ago. What's your take on it? They said that they don't want to be associated with him. He founded International House of Prayer. And yes, they said share. because of inappropriate behavior. Yes. They don't want to be when it happened, the Lord told me he was a Samson in the house of prayer. 
and he made a wrong decision. And so we still have free will. We can still make choices that are bad or good. But the Samson let his hair get cut in the old Bible, in the Old Testament. Delilah, he she cut his hair, took his power away. So mm -hmm. that's how I associate that, that he was a Samson in the prayer movement. He had a great teaching. For 25 years, I followed him. Dimitri, I was riding my tractor every day, just speaking what he spoke, getting his sermons down, uh, and his teaching on apostolic prayers. Can't take that away from him. It's gold nuggets. And so, yes, he fell. But like King David fell, right? When he slept with, uh, he took uh, the hey, wife, killed the man, right? He's still God, God's man of heart. He's still a man after God's heart. We can, none of us are perfect, but does right. not rule his ministry as false because he made a bad decision. But yes, he's going to have consequences. He's going to have consequences, maybe divorce. He's going to, I guess he's going to maybe sue these women to try to prove his innocence. Costly battles. And then as people are leaving, yes, many are leaving. It's sad. It's very, very sad. sad. It's grieving. It's, it's, it's torturous. I don't like to go there. Let's talk about uh, your uh, business mentors. Who do you follow in the business world? I uh, and I, I... <laughs> in in our space. Let, let's touch really quick. Uh, I always wanted to ask you. Um, you have baptized Anthony Dolmatico about a year ago. Tell me about your ex that experience. What led to it? Your relationship with Anthony? Is he's your mentor? Is he's your friend? Anthony. Uh, Anthony is the godfather, uh, in a way, of the roofing industry. And I've, I've just felt akin to him because I lost my brother to drugs in the rock and roll world. I was in the 80s playing in bands and we warmed up for Aerosmith and Def Leppard and Iron Maiden. And I had the long hair and it was amazing. But my, my brother got into drugs and he overdosed. And that was 1997. And then when I met Anthony in the uh, you know year 2010, when I got into roofing, uh, I saw a brotherhood, a fellowship in his heart, even though there was some things that needed to be worked out. And so my call, Dimitri, is intercession and prayer. I'm a prayer warrior at heart. And the Lord's given me that compassion for people to be able to read a spirit or a soul like you're, you're precious, man. I love what you're doing. But Anthony, too, he's he's a childlike kind of soul. And, and he's got this entrepreneurial spirit. And then he's got this grumpy heart. <laughs> he's just got some things, these habits he's got to get rid of. So I prayed for him, man. I fasted for him. For years, I just knew God's got a call in this life to change the industry. And so now the right time comes. We're in Florida. It is the last event. And I go up to him and we talk. And one year leads to the next and praying for an open door for me to get through. And I show up at the beach and we're sitting there and he's at the pool. And it was just amazing. And we're asking about spiritual things. And I said, brother, it's a rainy day. But the water is right out there. I mean, if you want to give your life to Christ, this is an amazing time to do it, right? Why not change you know, the next month and season with a new heart? You've got a daughter now. It's time to get your life in order. You're a father to a precious woman. This child could grow up to know God or not based on your decision. And so we went ahead and he has a lot of questions still. And uh, we went into the uh, beach. It was rainy. I know it so well. And he's told the story, so I don't have to retell it all. But the rain was coming in our face, my friend. And we're sitting there looking at the water. And we're thinking, it's cold out here. And I said, I know. I said, right now we're being baptized in the rain. But I just think that it would be so awesome if we jumped in the ocean and we get baptized. What do you say? And we ran in and just did it. It was so cool. And he's a heavy guy, so I had to pull him up. <laughs> he came out cried he cried i felt like there definitely was a transformation there and it comes and goes as you grow in the spirit of the lord you have to you have to be a disciple after that you have to get into the book right <laughs> and it has to be a daily thing and so we got to eat daily because every day the devil comes at us with just stupid stupid ideas temptations right but every temptation has a way out but are you yeah, mentoring so him after the uh after that or are you still connected <laughs> still connected by text and by phone and also john laub is a big influence in his life he's a good friend too and john john has a good good direct contact with him i met, I met john uh at my church here in minneapolis a couple months ago like oh, yeah. I'm like hey john yeah um, he's kicking off his new year with a new um uh, journal amazing journal so he comes to my house last year a few times. He helped us get leads. He's a great door knocker with Music City Roofers. 
so he would come in. We work out in the gym here, and then we go down and crush it. So he's called uh, Inspire Johnny, Johnny Inspire. So me and him are sort of walking with Anthony. And of course, now Anthony has his new uh, place in Florida, and he wants to have the exit strategy at the end of January. And he invited me down, but I can't make it because I'll be in St. Kitts that week. Got it. All right. My next question is this. You position yourself as a you know Christian leader. Uh, you have a book called I, ha I Am, I Have. Yes. You, uh, here's the quote from your book. Yes. Uh, I'll help you turn your dreams into reality. Get my secrets to success. How can you promise that? How can you promise that you can help people to get dreams into reality? What What takes someone to take a dream into reality because you're not financial advisor there's a disclaimer on your website you're not financial advisor but essentially you are giving financial advice um good question out of your book and what do you do uh -huh. let me ask you with a question how do you bring reality roofers who want to build a company it's basically experience it's coaching them through it's taking them on the road the Emmaus way which is the 40-day journey in this book each day is a character lesson, okay? Uh, first, you are you walk in obedience, you walk in integrity, you walk as a servant. So these 40 days, if you take these to heart, you have a definition of each uh, character. Uh, I am determined, for example, firmness of purpose, resolute, the quality of mind which reaches definite conclusions. Then I have a prayer for that character quality, determination. So it's a religious book, it's not a business book. Good question. Right. So, but does it not religious? I would say spiritual, because if you say religion, people think rules, regulations, have tos. If you break the law, you're in trouble with God. He's going to hold you with an angry fire. <laughs> yeah. But spirituality is what helps prosperity, too. So we are spiritual beings. Right. We aren't human beings living on the earth. We are spiritual beings in a world that uses uh, manifestations of things to to attribute to our success. So if we apply the principles of God, because he is a God of wealth and prosperity, he doesn't want us poor and broke because then we can't change the world. So he wants us to have the wealth. He wants us to have the riches, but we have to be accountable with that, or we can abuse situations and take advantage of people. Just like he doesn't want us to be sick, he wants us to be healthy. He wants us to have revelation, knowledge, and wisdom of his will for our lives so we can bless other people. That's the key to wealth, is for others to enjoy prosperity too. make enough that you can give enough away i'm gonna read this question i think it came just the right time i'm not gonna tell you where it came from but oh are sorry. we live huh are we live no no it's just a text message we're not live okay this this is zoom um the bible says to whom much is given much is required how do you personally determine how much is required of you and the amount you give back that's huge wow and I realized that that the deeper we go with God, the more accountability we have, whether it's wealth or whether it's teaching or whether it's relating to people. He is in the detail so much like it's the fear of God. The deeper you get with the Lord in relationship, the more you can say he's with me. His Holy Spirit is living in me. You carry him, his presence. And so that creates the fear of God, because if you're out of line, he <laughs> gets smacked or you can actually, I don't know about you, but when I tempt to sin, I actually feel tingles in my hands. Like, like the Holy Spirit's not going to leave my body unless I, I reject him. But I do feel a sense of his presence leave me when I'm tempted and I enter into sin. Just being honest. And I can actually lose the fellowship as a friend of God by doing that because the friends of God fear him and honor his commands and obey him instantly. It's not like I have to think about it. It's just a walk. It's a lifestyle. And so as we deep, as we go deeper with God, the closer that gap is of doing what he asks immediately, and it tethers us to his word, because the Holy Spirit's job is to speak truth. As soon as we maybe are tempted or have a, a question, his, his job is one of them is to speak truth. He tells of the future. He's the paraclete. He's with us. He's He's kind of wrapped his arms around us in a way. Uh, and he's carrying us through life in the boat with Jesus is where we want to stay. And when he calls us out of the boat in faith, we have to be able to take a walk and step out onto the water. 
And that's how I believe 2024 is going to be about, Dimitri, is coming out of the intimacy of Christ in Psalm 23, where he's the good shepherd, and going into Psalm 24, where he's the king of glory for the year 2024. I prophesy that people will wake up to realize that we are actually the kingdom and we can carry it with us in a greater degree. Because face it, we're in a war, spiritual war. It's World War III in other countries. But in America, I believe we are at war in spirit and is coming physically this next year, sad to say. But we've been in the war for the past 250 years. Nothing changed. <laughs> say that now we're in a war and we haven't been before. It's always been the case. Uh, another controversial question here. It's probably the most controversial that I, I'll have for you. And it's not for me. It's someone texted it to me. If God has called you to do what you do and blessed you so much financially, why do you charge people to share the knowledge and wisdom he has freely blessed you with? That's a good question. And of course, we both know the answer. Maybe some don't is that if you don't put in skin, you're not in the game. And so I just funny you asked that because I just lowered my fee from four ninety seven to ninety seven dollars. Kyle Redmond's my friend. He does my back office stuff. Say, Kyle, I, I feel like we need to lower this because I want more people to enjoy the freedom of success and wealth. And I don't have to charge. I don't need their money for this. I've already sold my company. I have eight figures. Done. Millionaire is good. I want people to have skin in the game because if they don't, they won't use it. So many times I give my sons free things and, and they still sit here. I got a skid loader, a $15,000 skid loader sitting outside for a business for my other son because I bought it and he ain't using it. And I say, Jacob, it's the end of the year, man. What have you done with the skid loader? <laughs> well, excuses, excuses, you know. So that's why. How, how much is enough is enough? How do you determine how, like to decide like everything is buffered, th this amount is net worth or whatever? Like do you have <laughs> a number in mind or? These are good questions, man. Just talking about that, my wife over vacation, like, how much is enough? Wall Street, right? How much is enough, man, <laughs> on the elevator? And I asked my wife that. I said, I've got now, you know, the podcasting. I'm writing another book. I'm traveling to St. Kitts to join an investment uh, community. And I'm building a transformation center here across my land. I got everything off grid, solar, wells, we're growing food. Uh, you know, we want to prepare for a community of health and living where we're not dependent on the government. Uh, and so is how do I do this possible thing? not to be depending on the government? As much as you can, I think that we have to eradicate that control idea that they have over us. And unfortunately, in the finance world, they're coming down hard, right? SEC regulations. But as far as food supplies, we can see change are getting disrupted. Uh, so we have our own food growing, um, let's see, called hydroponic barns. And it's based on solar and, and it's a very neat system. And then as far as water, we have two or three wells on the property. So we have our basics taken care of, shelter, food, and water. And then it just becomes a matter of how are we going to trade, right? So we have cryptocurrencies, blockchain, these other ways of not using banks because we, we believe this is the year of becoming unbanked and going DeFi. And so- In 2024, you think it'll happen? It's already happening, brother. It's already happening. And some of the major banks have fallen and collapsed in California. Now it's just a sprinkling of what we'll see next year. But the idea is it's control, grab, and power the banking system. Wars are about money, making money. It's the banking system creating wealth or losing wealth. Everybody wants to be in control of the next coin, whether it's a digital, the BRICS nations coming together, right? And they're trying to kick United States out of the dollar because it's really just a greenback. It's uh, pretty much not worth what it used to be. And so we have gold and silver coming in next year, big time. It's just uh, just chased over $2,000 an ounce gold. And so I teach people how to get into a silver business called At Cost Metals, which is really good. And so, yeah, I vet all of the business ideas and the things I share before I give them out. And like you said, I'm not a financial advisor, but I just share my experience and my hope and my strength of people. So uh you sound very pessimistic i follow patrick bad david he was in our state he was speaker at our last conference and one of the sayings patrick bad david says is future is bright and i agree with it like future is bright like i believe you know i've been in this country for 17 years you might not agree with me or maybe you'll agree but i believe that this is the best country on planet earth I've lived around the world, right? Like I come from Russia. I see what's happening in Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine right now, right? Exactly. But 
you know, when I listen to you and you're not alone, there's a lot of conspiracy guys. Buy silver, like, you know, crypto, do dollar will fail. Nothing new. I've heard it 10 years ago. I've heard it 20 years ago. As a matter of fact, 30 years ago, people were saying that America is doomed. And to more, like, I'm just not buying in an idea that, hey, like the end is near. We know, but the end has been near for 2000 years. Here what makes 2024 so yes. special? Why right now you're, you know, you believe I've listened to your other um, interview. You're saying that dollar, dollar is collapsing. Dollar, Like, okay, if dollar is bad, if we should not invest in dollar, what makes crypto any better? Good question. So it's not just the crypto. Let me go back to your your first thing is over 2000 years. Yes, there's been wars and rumors of wars. And and then every year goes by and we feel like it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter on both sides. I thought Y2K was going to be a big problem. Year 2000, computers going down, right? A part of me rejoices at the idea of a pause. So, so we can come back to a sense of reality, it's a presence and peace and just rest. Because I just told Kyle, I said, Kyle, how many things do we have to keep doing here to keep the wheel turning, <laughs> right? Like you said earlier. But as long as it's managed well, as far as the end, um, there are prophetic voices talking about a famine uh, on the horizon. We see uh, food banks being blown up and fires created on some of the biggest food manufacturers across the nation. Somehow these fires just started last year. Two or three of the major ones. And then we have things uh, like the BRICS nations coming in, right? China, India, um, and Brazil, oil, oil nations, right? Creating yeah. their gold digital coin, um, kicking the dollar aside. So we can see there's things that seem to be lining up. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a chain reaction. And until it gets to be a, such a big chain, then it could be a collapse in one gap. But I don't think it's going to happen overnight. It's going to be a series of events that take place, just like the things with Trump. I'm not saying I like everything Trump does, but it's sad to see that this guy can't now even run in Colorado and they're trying to snuff him out, but he's still leading the race. It's pretty sad that a free America can't have freedom of choice in that era, that arena. So there's just a lot of things that are you know, considered nefarious. And so I, I do believe with you, though, that we are kings and the light of the world is us, the believers, that we need to be that light no matter when the darkness comes, whether it's tomorrow or 10 years from now. However, I do see the next six years as a pivotal point as the year 2030. I can't see what's beyond that. All I can tell you is get some food resources prepared because it's been going on so long. It's probably a wise idea. And you can see there's food problems. Um, but yeah, that's a big topic. It is a big topic. Uh, and I agree with you that we have to be smart, but would you agree that as entrepreneurs, the worse the times, the better we are? Because, you know, as entrepreneur, we shine in bad environment, in right. off markets. I just thought about that this morning in prayer. I was thinking how roofers seem to always succeed, even in off markets. We have an industry that seems to be 24-7, uh, even in poverty or depressed areas. So everybody needs a roof. But the spirit of the industry seems to be strong. You know, when you think of these roofers who are teaching in these conferences like you and people on the air, I, I see a sense of kingship authority that is uh, and it has to do with wealth, too, because when we have authority with wealth, we can transform the world. If we lose the mountain of media and wealth, then we're doomed. Right. Because that means our voice doesn't matter. And that's what they tried to do last year with the mask. Put the mask on. Did you know that Fauci means jaw? Fauci means jaw. And he told us to put the mask on. So there's something about that. Why did COVID get released from China? And we never really found out about all that stuff. You, you but, like conspiracies. You like <laughs> conspiracy theories. If it's true, you can't <laughs> deny that Fauci, look it up. What does it mean? It means jaw. Yeah, but, but okay, if that's true, but what does it mean to for my business? What does it mean for my everyday life? There's good and evil in the world. And so we need to be aware of the darkness and be the light. Uh, we're the salt of the earth. So if the, stop, if the salt isn't salty, it needs to be kicked out. And so I just want to be that guy who's the vessel that the Lord can be used as an instrument of praise. By the way, I write a lot of praise songs. You may have seen some on my site. JeffRichfield.com is my other website. I don't know if you know that, but I have... Uh, I have uh, songs that are patriotic songs and books on my main website. Let's oh. talk about your website. So you sold your roofing company 
music CD first first question is why did you sell it that's a great question yes um so uh I'm not getting younger I am 60 years old I've done a lot of work in my life and I I I I wanted to be free to be able to travel spend time with my family the things that mean more are the lifelong relationships that we have. And I love business. I'm an entrepreneur, Godpreneur, what have you. But there are places where there's been some vacuums with me and my time with the family. <laughs> and I want to really father my sons and daughters well. And I really want to travel with my wife. She's got some healing issues we're working through. And so actually we're going away on the January 10th to, to St. Kitts, like I said, for 10 days to get away. Last year we went on a catamaran cruise to the Bahamas. That was phenomenal. But yes, so I wanted to take the wealth that I had from one area and leverage it for now what I'm doing so I could help more people in this other areas besides roofing. And so then I wanted to create the opportunity of the 70 acres that we have, which is a transformation center, a community we're building called Eagles Landing. I'd love the people come out and see it uh, where we have this hydroponic farm growing food supplies, because I want to be able to take in a hundred people in, in during a time when there's need and, 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 and disciple them. Basically, you can call me roofer preacher if you want, but uh, I'd like to be that guy who can take a hundred people on the farm. Not that we're going to be anything cultish, <laughs> but we want to be able to serve each I'm other cultish. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and serve each other with the land. See, interesting to me, my name is Jeff, which means God's peace and rich field. So God's peace in a rich field is my legacy. Your name has to do with your legacy. I don't know what Dimitri means, but maybe look it up and find out. So no, I, I know what my name means. Uh, fr fruit of the earth, actually. Woo! It's, it's you need to come on my community then. <laughs> Very cool. But what are you teaching? So like through your website, I see this advertising message. You've sold your roofing company to Fiesel. Is yeah. it uh, Fiesel now do they have um funds behind them is it hedge fund or is it uh oh, just let me explain fund? yeah yeah hey Faisal's great leo roberto phenomenal guy family culture we were approached twice before to be uh purchased first from apple roofing you know them great guys unfortunate what happened with uh, mm -hmm. Dustin, and then uh, it just didn't work out with the numbers with their corporate strategy. Uh, the second time was a solar company in Arizona that wanted to acquire us, and that just blew up and got out of hand. You probably saw that as a release before we got purchased. They released the news that they bought us, and everybody started coming. Hey, congratulations! We didn't get we didn't get bought. Why, why did they do that? Like, what's they the story? That because it's a pump and dump stock company. I believe they wanted to pump the stock. And it was a conglomerate of many companies, and they you maybe use that as leverage. That's the uh, that's the company that Hunter Ballou sold to and bought back his shares. I think so. I want to name any names. It went yeah. south big time. So then my son. Are they still in business? What's their stock value now? I don't know. I, I think they changed their names. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm not sure what's happening with that. But my son, James, he's 30 uh, now, next year. Uh, he's so smart. He, God gives him dreams. And just a couple of years before we sold, he said, Dad, I think you need to go ahead and get really hot on commercial and get the sales up and all. So we got our EBITDA up to three million for the sale and sold for, you know, multi millions. I won't talk about the, the, the total dollar amount, but it was it was the perfect fit for the Fiesel. They have 12 offices nationwide, 11 or 12. And we are second in command. We hit 20 million just last week in residential only. So that was awesome. So uh, sometimes I say to myself, should I have waited a year? <laughs> but no, it was a good time. And so Fiesel has 12 offices and Matt is in the company, Matt Sherry, and a great team of fellows. And uh, they, took, they took us and I'm still there for two years as an employee now. And let me tell you, that's hard to be an employee after you're an owner. Woo! I What's got your role? What do, what do you do as employee? I uh, I got slapped on it. You can't do that kind of marketing right now. <laughs> uh, well, are you CEO employee? Are you like leader? Are you like, what's your position? I'm head of multifamily and, uh, and high-end commercial sales and also the face of the company. So here's an example. We had the tornadoes just a couple weeks ago, right? Come through. Four of them touched down. It was terrible. People lost their lives. I'm there uh, the night they show up. Afterwards, people had died in the area. I get on the news channel and they're filming me on the news channel too. And they didn't like how that came across. <laughs> so I, 
I had to kind of, ooh, really? I thought it was great. Man, this is me. This is how I interact. <laughs> but how, uh, how do you take it? Like, how do you take the criticism? Uh, is it oh, hard? It was, it was hard, man. Uh, it was Saturday morning after a hard week of work. And I got a text from the owner saying, I don't know what you were thinking about on that news channel, too. And my whole spirit went, ugh. And my heart pumping like but I did. What did, you, what did you say that they didn't like? Were you were too spiritual, too emotional? Uh, no, no, no. I just said how we were getting so much business, and they made it seem like, well, what about the compassion of the people? And I said, well, they didn't put that part in. I did talk about being compassionate and helping people, but she put in there that, that we got thirty claims set up already, and it, it was more about the money and, and the way it came off. But I, I thought it was still good. I got people texting me all over saying, "Fantastic job." But, you know, opinions matter. So I just had to say I had to be submissive and just uh, consider that. But it, it felt a little shaming, actually. <laughs> so but it's OK. I, I, I go on and I proceed. Um, but, yeah, learning to be employee because even the logo they changed, too. And that was hard to understand after 10 years of wearing a shirt with one logo. And now it's different. And so that's good. But, uh, you know, we just have to maintain clear communication. I love the company and everything that it's, that are about. And uh, I think they're topping, you know, 180 million this year between all the companies. And no, no, no regrets selling to them. No regrets at all. No, it was the right time, right place. So you offer roofers to help sell their companies. So you like your message is, I've done it. I've sold my company. I'll help you. What kind of help do you offer? That's great. Yeah. So uh, I went through the, all the steps to get it done. And so if you've ever thought about, you know, selling your business, I think I got something you can drop into the chat if people want to see. Uh, I sent you on a text, but maintaining clear, well, financial documents. Number one, if you don't pay your taxes, and if you don't keep financials with a profit, you're not going to be able to sell your company. And so working with an accountant and a CPA that's trusted and going over your financials, and so I, I massage the companies that come to me and I, I want to see how they can succeed. If they don't have the, your, your taxes paid, that's number one red flag, right? But that's, that forms the basis of the valuation from there. So you can do the EBITDA, which could be anywhere from four to six times. You know, right now, things are going good. I believe 2024 is going to be a good year to exit strategy. So yeah, scaling to sell is, is what I'm doing with Roofers United. And yeah, I want to reach out. I'm I'm walking with a couple equity firms like Morgan Stanley and some of the others that are out there. John Dye and me are good friends. You may know him, of course, American contractor. And uh, there's other private equity firms that are out there seeking. And Feasel is actually seeking too. So they have their own capital. Everybody's buying. Everybody's buying. Everybody's buying. In real estate, everybody's buying. Or you can't sell right now, right? <laughs> but uh yeah, we scrutinize financials and we basically leverage their position and just see kind of where they're at, uh, their employees. We have a form on our website that they can fill out to determine a company's value. And so what is special about your company to make it valuable, right? We get into the core. We talk about the employees versus subcontractors. We talk about uh, their accounting methods. Are they cash basis or are they accrual accounting, right? So we go through these things, try to come up with an evaluation, and we do come up with an evaluation, and then we marry that with the right private equity firm and see if they're a fit. Hiring a reliable broker and build a support team can be a, a difficult thing. And sometimes they take a lot of money, like 10% sometimes of the fee. So I'm not a broker that way. I don't charge an exorbitant fee. The company pays me, the bank pays me. And so uh, we maintain confidentiality. We perform uh, business valuations, and then we see who are they a good fit for. And it's across the nation. Some companies are just looking for East Coast roofers who are just cash basis, not insurance based. Some are looking for all the gamut of everything. Some like employee structures only. And so <clears throat> we take a look at all these different uh, ways. And then we look at the contracts. Uh, and since I'm familiar with contracts and closing the deal, trust me, when I got 100, page, uh, 100 pages I had to do of due diligence, I looked at that and I about fell off my seat. Right. That's a lot of work for somebody who's a single operator. <clears throat> but me and my son tackled it and we got all those documents filled out. It took about three months in that process. But now some of these companies can do in 60 days what took us 90 days. And they're ramping up fast, monopolizing the industry. Right. It seems like to me, Tree, that this industry is the only one lacking with getting monopolized. You have other areas of uh, sectors of business that have got bought up, you know. 
in um, banking, for example, um, is now going to be the seven big banks, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, and these uh, seven seven moguls, if you will, Chase Morgan. <clears throat> and so closing the deal is the key too. And, and then also I teach people what to do with their wealth. Once they got sold, how do you provide a legacy for your family? Uh, where are you going to stash your cash? <laughs> what are you going to do with that wealth? So it doesn't uh, create a, create a hole in your pocket and make you know decisions. Look, that looking at your website, I get it that you, you, <laughs> the answer is buy crypto, gold and silver. So it's the right crypto at the right time, but it's not just buying the crypto, it's liquidity pools. It's basically knowing how to accumulate fees. Like when people buy crypto, there's a transaction fee. Liquidity pools are a place to make wealth. It's a very low risk. And so we're able to attain about um, five to 6% a month return, which is pretty substantial in the liquidity pool, which is very low risk. We manage that for people and we help them develop a system on that. Um, for the gold and silver, it's a good time to get in because you can see that when the rates and inflation rise, typically is a good time for gold and silver. And silver is a big lagger. To me, it should be much, much. Uh, and I think it's a generational wealth uh, ma mountain that we're missing on silver. So I think there's a lot of gap that needs to be gained for silver. And then real estate, teaching people about flipping, right? Uh, we have some Airbnbs that we've purchased since we sold. Infinite banking is another uh, success strategy, which is using insurance policies to use other people's money to buy your dream. So infinite banking, people can Google that. It uses two insurance policies to leverage so that you can use a fifty or $100,000 of their money to buy something and not have to pay it back legally. Pretty amazing stuff. And then tax strategies. Yes. Question. If, uh, if you are so confident in each one, why diversify? So like, for example, let's say I give you $10 million. You know, if you know that silver is a gold mine, gold mine, silver, uh, but, uh, you know, underrated investment or crypto, five, seven percent rate or Airbnbs. Why not put all money in one basket if you have faith and confidence in each and single one of them? Great question. I have a guy who does my silver and that's all he does. He buys the silver, takes possession of it, uh, probably have millions of dollars. Well, I don't know. He stores it. Where are you going to store all that silver in possession? I ask him, I say, why don't you want to get some gold or think about this crypto stuff? Because all I know is I've been, I've been, uh, I've been used and abused before and lost in other programs where I didn't have possession of my wealth. I understand his thinking he's got possession of it. And so it's a little bit too much, I think on the right side, because, you know, you can't just have silver walk around the rest of your life. <laughs> and so you, you want to diversify. So in case one goes down, you have others that can um, that you can uh, not co-mingle, but then you have a leverage. If you lose, like I did, I lost in the pre previous past on stock markets, but then I also had gold. So gold was a good, you know, counterbalance to the stocks. Right now, I'm just invested in defense stocks, oils and commodities. That's it. I'm not in and, and the seven big stocks like Microsoft and Google and Amazon, but I'm not taking much chances. I like silver mines that are out there right now and some specific gold mines. If I'm going to be in the stock market with my Merrill Lynch account, but most of my wealth is some things that you don't hear about. And that's what I teach you about when you buy my $97 discounted to $97 one time fee to get my information. <laughs> all, right, all right. Last two questions. Um, Describe perfect roofing business model that very sellable, very attractive to equity firms. So whoever is buying the business is now like small business size, operation. Yes. Just yeah. like describe it. What they're they're yeah. looking for. First off, the person who's doing two to three million a year right now may not be thinking about selling. But see, even those companies are being fired because some of the private equity firms are giving 80% of the value at that point. And then you still sit in your seat as an owner, not an owner, but as a leader. And then a year or two down the road, we can maximize that leverage and build the company's value and then have a 20% left over cash out. And that could be three to five years down the road. So small companies that are out there, you're still good for the game. Don't think you have to be 30 million in sales to be able to be sold or captured because you can still ride the storm out. Um, so the platform on some of these bigger channels, uh, marketing channels can generate additional leads and additional value to your company while you're being sought after. Um, 
the, the new the new owner will still be working on the business and not in it as much. And so there's a little bit of a gap there where you can take a breathe because you have a big investment company behind you. Uh, shared learnings of other owners are involved there. For example, on Morgan Stanley, I think they have, um, yeah, here it is right here. They've got All Star up there in, in Minnesota, and you've probably heard of them. Kingdom Roofing Systems, a good friend of mine, actually sold me his Airbnb because I knew about him at Kingdom Roofing. Great guy. Um, rapid Roofing. And and so they're they're buying up, I think it's uh, $100 million of assets. And so go back to your question again. What am I love? They're looking for companies that have solid books, good financials, of course, and don't have any contracts that are maybe preventing them from being sold. Like I had one that had copyrighted uh, a logo. I'm sorry, copyrighted uh, their name with another company. And this other company is being, getting bought but this guy can't sell his company, even though it's the same name, because he signed away his rights to it. I didn't know that in the beginning. Sad. And so uh, that was those sort of things. So they have to be clean, and then they have to have a good history. They have to be able to have employees and subcontractors showing that you paid your taxes and your W, your uh, work compensation, the liability insurance has been going along. There's not a lot of hits on your driving records. So yeah, clean is very important. And, um, and I don't think that you have to be a cash sale retail roofing company to be acquired. They're still ones looking for insurance, uh, you know, nominated types of roofing companies. However, when the insurance process, it's a, 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 whether it's a cash basis or accrued accounting ma matters, because most of the time the purchasing people only count the, the sales that are sold and paid. So when you have insurance claims, that could be three, four, five, six months, right? So at the end of the year, some of those deals can't be counted. So it makes a loss of revenue value if you're going on a different uh, accounting system. And last question, give advice to owner operator who does not have employees, maybe not even a receptionist who does it all, like maybe $1 million guy, but who has a dream to sell his business. And he wants to sell, he wants to consider, is that what you're saying? One day, like one day, I, I, I get a lot of guys who cannot even give their phone away. Like I'm answering my phone calls. I do my sales. I do it all. So they don't have a sellable business today. They're owner operators. That's... What do you tell? But they have a dream one day, five, 10 years from now. Right. After That's good. Day. That's all. That's great. That's where you need to scale. That's where scaling comes in. Right. And so I would say, let's look at the next three months and talk about where we can scale your company, where you can maybe hire one or two, three, three people that it could be equitable arrangements. And if you can't, you can't. But even if he's one guy selling two million a year, two and a half, three million, then if he still wants to be purchased, he can still get that 80 percent of his EBITDA. And then he can get in there and get some cash to take a relax and hire some people. And so I think it's a win win. If you go either way, the longer route's going to be for that guy to just make it on himself and do the haul by himself. But you got to learn how to scale. And that's why I love some of the coaches out there like you. You teach people how to do that stuff, get scaled up. John Dye is great with that stuff. You know, Coach Jim Johnson, uh, we loved him when we hired him for a while. There's a lot of great coaches out there, Ryan. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I think it's a win-win. 2024 is the open door in the spirit. That means in Hebrew, the open door. And 2023 was be the voice, right? And then we had the masks on. Isn't that a coincidence? 2024 is open door to go through and be use your kingly authority, whether it's wealth with God or wealth as you're given, and build the kingdom on earth because that's Jesus's endly prayer. Thy will be done as it is in heaven on earth. So we need to walk out those mountains, which is wealth, uh, health, community, uh, uh, the school system, right? And the church. There's seven mountains we needed to be in control of, and the media. And if we control those mountains, then we are influencers in the kingdom on earth. Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. Thank you so much for your time today. Guys, comment below what you think about this interview. Ask any questions for Jeff. Jeff, can I have your commitment to come back to questions to answer them later in comments? It's 100%. And please, guys, go to roofersunited.org to look at the, the business questionnaire to fill it out if you're interested in you know being acquired. It's a win-win. And I can tell you from the other side, it looks a lot better. Love it. Thank you so much for your time today, brother. Thanks, Dimitri. God bless you, bro. Bless you. Bye.